We're back again. We've gone and purchased some parts for the 80, so it's another little build video for the 80 series. So at the moment, we're currently sitting on like a one and a half, two inch lift, so low, low and wide. My up travel obviously isn't much, and I keep unseating my recoils massively. They don't like seating back up. They have got retainers on the bottom, but there's no, I need like a dropout cone. So I've gone and changed, and we've gone and purchased some four inch coils. We've got some four inch coils, we went, new lower control arms, upper control arms, tie rods, pan hards, we've, we've got all the rods. The whole purpose of this video is I'll show how I'm putting them in. My thought process is I'm just going to drive up my flex ramp, let my coil unseat, drop the new coil in, come back down to the opposite side. Hopefully it should be a nice straightforward one. But I also wanted to make sure and see, I know flex comes mostly from shocks and shock length, but I wanted to see if the coils actually change anything at all. So when I, what I'll do is I'll put it up, flex it in two, like on my one and a half, two inch kit, flex it on that and then measure it and see if it makes any difference because it might give me more up travel, which hopefully in turn might give me more down travel. But we'll find out. It's more just an educational video for myself really and may help someone in the future if they're looking around for it. Yeah, look at what we got. We got a whole heap of Dobbins and stuff. Um, pretty much, most of it's all Dobinson. I didn't get Superior. One, this cost me $1,000 less than Superior. Two, I ordered it and it come the next day. Um, I ordered off Roadrunner Off-Road. They shipped from Melbourne. They rang me a couple of hours after I put the order in just to make sure I got the, the spring rates correctly and just confirming everything. And I literally received it the next morning at like 7.30 in the morning. Obviously, you're going to have a slight bend in your tape measure. But to centre, I have 900 hey, Dad. and... Hey, Dad. Get in the car. <laughs> I have 925 mil. So we have 450. <laughs> We'll go get our measurement here. We have eight eight oh five, and with our tuck, we got four four hundred. Say four oh five. So we're four hundred mil of difference in the front. Didn't go to plan as well as I'd hoped, but we got it. We got it. We done the old dodgy ratchet strap trip trick. Ratchet straps. Strap each side. So that way it compresses the spring. Don't really want to pinch my hands, so I won't grab the mallet. <clears throat> left hand side is from what I could see online, fuel tank is your left hand side of your vehicle. So technically it's when you're sitting in the car, you're on the right side. And then passenger side is your left side. So they come left and right coils to suit heavier weights per side of vehicle. And you can see how easy it unseats them. So up and out. This is pretty much my length difference. So from what I believe when I brought the car, these were two inch. These are now four. So yeah, that'd be pretty close to your 50 mil, which should be another two inches. To help me go get them in, I've just loosened the back bolt on my radius arm, that little bit there. On the passenger side, it's got a little divot here on the front. Driver side, the divot's on the other side. If you're wondering why I'm using a hammer to crack it, I've jammed my hands in them a few too, too, few too many times and it's not fun. Especially in tight little awkward spots. So that pretty much is a four inch coil just unseated. Like it's just loose enough. Yeah, meter, meter five. I'm 
we'll go check the other side. This is just with the sway bar disconnected, so. Yeah, 400. I think I had 405 before. Again, not a massive difference between the two. As you can see, I wouldn't even say it's really 50 mil. I dare say those old ones are a bit sagged and soft now. These will be a bit better suited for the setup I've got in here. Another thing I'll explain while I'm here looking at the car on the rear is long arm kits in the rear of patrols, anything coiled, is exactly for this. So if you look at the direction my wheel is pointing, it's called rear steer. What happens is when you start to droop down, it turns your wheel so you steer in a different direction. When you put a longer arm in, instead of being on that direction, it might kick it this way a bit more to be straight to be straight with the vehicle it's good for obviously real long like real hard technical tracks it's quite a quite a big bit of rear steer which can just put your rear end off the correct line and put you in a bit of a sticky spot sometimes but you just got to learn how to drive and steer with it as a standard car there's the coil the coil doesn't unseat so my problem before was it was unseating from the top dropping down and then when it was trying to seat back up there it wasn't sitting too pretty it's loose so i'll put the retainer on the bottom we are doing the lower control arms now rubber mallet it's gonna go and hit, hit one out you can buy adjustable ones to obviously suit your lift depending on your lift um from where i ordered them Road runner off road, it just said 11 mil to suit anything bigger than a two inch lift. So we've gone and gotten that, as you can see. It's slightly bigger. I've got the bolt on the other end just so they line up, so I can give you the idea. And then I've got adjustable uppers to get my pinion angle correct once I. And then just pry it like this until it wants to sort of go through. Another good little thing with um, the kit that I got from Roadrunner. They send new upper control arm bolts. I managed to get one out. The other one, you can't get out without removing the coil. Um, and I believe it's there's like a bracket mounted there where the handbrake runs through. You've got to dismantle all of that just to get the bolts out. So they send new bolt. So what I'm gonna do is just go and cut them. We've gone and jacked the diff on the, well the pinion on the diff to get it parallel with the transfer case. I was just checking to make sure um, that the arms are actually longer. I just poked one of the old ones back in and it looks to be about that 15 mil longer, which my lower arms, my lower arms were 11 mil longer. So now I'll go spin out my new ones and put them in because then that way I can pretty much move this. I just got to do my rear pan hard. Rear pan hard at the moment, what's happening, perfect spot for it. So here it bolts to the chassis and then it comes across and bolts to the diff. The more you bring the diff lower from the chassis, what it tends to do is it pulls it pulls the car to one side. You can see the tire sort of sits inside the flare. And that's why you need adjustable fan hard. I don't know how well you could see that, but it's currently pulling my tires to the driver's side. So I'm gonna pull them back the other way. I'm just gonna pop that out, put the adjustable one in, make it longer obviously to allow for it, and it'll pull the tires back into where they need to be. Rear pan hard is in, the adjustable one. So I went about 20 mil bigger than this one, put it in and then adjusted it. Um, what I did to help align the diff is I put a ratchet strap on that corner of the diff because that's the side that was poking out. Went up to my chassis and just tensioned it a bit until it just shifted over till the bolt hole lined up. As for straightening it, I got a straight edge or a level. I didn't use level, but these are pretty new tires. It should be close enough. I went off like a big lug, the same size lugs, 
up to the guard and both sides. Yeah, I got both sides just touching, which would give me pretty close to a, pretty close to the same, theoretically, and then eyeing it. What we're doing, we're getting the original arm to get our set length and we're just spinning it out and we'll just make it like 10, 15 mil longer, try and get them even and then put the lock nut against one. Leave one just in case we need to tweak it a couple mil here and there. As you can see, we're already <coughs> five mil longer. So we'll get a couple more spins out of this to get our right length. We went and got one set in the car perfectly. Um, and then we locked it with the nuts on this one. Then we've gone and got our second one and just put our bolt through both ends to make sure they're the exact same size. We're just uh, on our flex track here, we're just doing another video, but I thought I would um, finish and end my coils and rear arm sort of video and get my measurements out here because the car is believe it's pretty close to fully flexed where it is um it's hard because i don't think i really lifted a wheel but it feels like it's it i think the rear might have just came out a bit but i'll give you all my measurements here to see if changing arms and coils and all that sort of stuff does make any difference to your flex or if it's just purely shock length so we'll go and get a couple measurements and let you know so my front one here to the center 455 fully open. I'm gonna say yes. 920. Says I could take my coil out. Fully compressed. 415. Um, we have 975. I'll go and put all the measurements here from previous to now. The whole reason I put four inch coils is because the two inch ones were unseaten horribly and they only just unseat, which is good, so they'll reseat nice and easily. Why'd you come alive?